Hello, in this video I'll show you how to use DateTime in C-sharp, but more importantly I will explain to you some of the features of DateTime. Using it in general doesn't really mean much because there are many features and you can simply retrieve a date or you can also create a date or you can subtract a date from another date or you can get maybe some pieces and parts and properties of a date. Many things you can do with that and let's get started with something basic, okay? Right here we have a piece of code, quite a interesting arrangement here. It doesn't really do anything this code but uh, you will see what we actually get in here. So first of all, let's see right here, we have date time and date time. So this is date time, this is the type that we are using for the dates in C sharp. Now, whether it's a date, a simple date, with just day, year, and uh, month, or it's a date with time, minutes, seconds, hours, and all that, it will still be date time. So date time for both things. There's no date or there's no time. There is time span, I'll explain that later, but uh, in general, we use date time even if it's just a date. So, there are two types of dates that you can retrieve. The first one is UTC, which is something you should probably use, okay? Unless, unless you are told otherwise, unless you know you need to do otherwise, you must use UTC because the time, and say, on your computer, on your client's device, uh, and on your service will be probably different. It will be in a different time zone and it will be different. And if you use now, that will be the time on that particular device. U to C now is the general time, right? It's always the same. No matter what your location is, no matter what your time zone is, it will be the same. So we want to always use U T C, okay? U T C time zone. That's what we want to use in programming. And it doesn't matter if it's C-sharp or some other programming language, it's always better to use UTC unless you need to do it in some other way, okay? So this is how you get the UTC now. It will be now and then we have now. If I put a breakpoint here and run it just quickly, I will show you and explain to you a bit of a, a structure here, okay? So we have this um, kind of a structure displayed like that but if I go deeper you can actually see we have quite a few properties here okay we go we have quite a few properties we have day of the week we'll explore that a little later but we have as you can see milliseconds minutes so, so it's all down to millisecond okay and we even have ticks we have ticks which I will explain a bit later in this video but you get your date you do see now and the same thing for now Okay, you get the same kind of uh, uh, data. The difference, of course, is that it's a different time zone and it will be a different value. Okay, so we get uh, UTC, UTC now. And that's 420, okay? And UTC is 220. Okay, so now it's uh, two hours later than the UTC, which is all fine and good. Okay, the second thing is you can create a date, of course. So let's move along. And here we create a date using new date time. So we basically construct the date time. And as you can see, we get the same kind of a date. The difference, of course, is that uh, we don't have milliseconds because we didn't really declare them, okay? And we don't have minutes because it's set to zero. Now I have to stop this to explain to you the parameters in here, which are quite simple. There are quite a few overloads, as you can see, 11 plus, and you can make several different arrangements here. But as you can see, in this case, we have year, month, day, int, hour. See, it's all integers. We have hour, minute, and second, and you can have milliseconds as well. And there are some other different arrangements. You can use ticks as well. Uh, lots of different options, but this is how you can create a date. You don't need to use a string. I don't like using strings. Uh, in general, it's a bad idea to use strings. Uh, the format you need to know, and it might 
get messed up in the delivery of course you kind of have to do it uh, especially if you do a json body in an api response or request uh, uh, and that can cause a few problems uh, but we're not uh, talking about problems we're just looking at the features here right so to create a date you simply construct new date time and that's it you have your date created then we have the difference and this is now a time span okay a time span so a difference here is subtraction we use subtract to subtract one date from another okay see we have one date it comes out the method subtract comes out from one date and then we subtract another date which is provided in the parameters okay you can subtract it now there is a overload for a time span okay but that will basically give us a difference now onto the time span okay this will be return type time span and we're now looking at constructing time span and doing all that stuff time span is basically what it says it's a time span it's a type for time okay and that's it there's nothing fancy to it to construct one you need to provide some parameters so, now you don't have to provide them all you don't have to do it but you can be very accurate or quite not accurate you can just do dates or hours and minutes and things like that uh, and another thing that's uh, quite good i believe here if you do say for example like here we have days it's one day okay and then we have hours it's 10 hours and then we have minutes which is 500 and it sort of wouldn't make sense but the good thing about this arrangement once it is constructed it will actually uh, convert it properly to a sort of real date time unit so uh, right here i will run the code and you will see how it all comes to be but uh, 500 minutes obviously that could be converted into hours okay it could be done into hours and then we can leave just uh, a certain amount of minutes uh, but it, the system will do it for us so if you know that you need 500 minutes you can simply declare 500 minutes and the system will take care of it you don't need to think and rethink and calculate and do all that stuff uh, it's a lot quicker this way so now i'm gonna put a breakpoint say right here and i'm gonna run it and i'll show you how it uh, sort of handles everything we have this uh, time span okay it's uh, quite a interesting arrangement okay and here we have as you can see now we have days one hours 18 you see we declared 10 but it made it into 18 because we have 500 minutes and now only 28 minutes are left we also had uh, seconds and milliseconds so it sort of uh, made everything nice and uh, easy to read uh, you may also notice in this case we have three milliseconds because it couldn't really convert that properly but if i would set this to zero it would show zero milliseconds so it all puts everything into place really a good arrangement so uh, it's uh, it can save you quite a bit of time now then i left some notes okay i left some notes here and you can actually find the source code uh, code on patreon you can find it on patreon if you choose to support this channel on any tier you will have access to this source code and to uh, the source codes of my other videos as well so let's see the tick now i left a little explanation on what a tick is now a tick is 100 nanoseconds okay a very tiny number but the whole thing can be represented in ticks the day time and time span it can be represented in ticks so that's a large integer actually or long integer whichever word you prefer uh, and it can be represented in simple well one number okay and one tick is 100 nanoseconds that's an interesting fact uh, and then one millisecond okay one millisecond 
is 10,000 ticks. And I left these notes. Uh, uh, you might need it sometimes, and uh, obviously uh, you're not going to remember this. There's no point in remembering it. It's just a waste of time. Uh, but if you take a look at this, you have your reference. Okay? And then we have another time span, another time span, which is uh, 10,000. Okay, now I'm going to move forward. Okay, right here. We have 10,000, and that is 10,000 ticks. Okay, 10,000 ticks. Or, as you can see, it's one millisecond. So, 10,000 ticks, one millisecond. Now, ticks are represented as a sort of separate value. It does not um, add up uh, along with the day, day, days, hours, uh, minutes, and seconds, and milliseconds. It's a separate value that represents uh, the whole sum of these. Okay, it's a separate one. That's what we have. So let's uh, let's close it out like that, and then we can look at some final things, but quite useful things as well. We have day of the week. Okay, day of the week. So this is a great thing when you want to display your values on the client. Okay, you obviously don't want to store. Uh, days like that in, in your databases or probably even do anything on the server side but uh, if you're using blazer if you're using blazer for your front end or if you have wpf application or something like that uh, you can easily use this to display the dates in a very nice way uh, for your clients so it's quite a good trick to have and it will save you a lot of time now a few more things just to get back to the dates the date times let's go into say local and i'll show you a few more things now you can add we we did subtract but you can actually add days okay so it's just a double value uh, whatever amount of dates uh, days you want to add and yes it is a double value so you can do say 10.5 days if you need that personally i don't like to use these kinds of values uh, it might make the code uh, a bit less readable, okay? If it's a hard-coded value, if it just comes from somewhere, it's just totally fine, probably. Okay, and then we have add months, and uh, you can add ticks as well. Add and add and add. Now, we have day, okay? So this gets the day of the month, okay? The day of the month. This is actually quite useful. Okay, this is good. This is quite useful. And then we have day of the week, uh, which we saw. Okay, so this day of the week, it actually gets Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever name of the day is. You see day of the week, it's the time. Now day, on the other hand, it just gets the number, which kind of makes sense, right? And uh, we have day of the year, which uh, can be probably useful. And then you can get uh, specific components of that day. So say you want to get the hour. This will get the hour in that uh, particular re re representation of the date. And you can get the month, of course, uh, and all the, all, all the other things as well. Okay. And then we have some, some of these uh, conversions. Uh, the long date string, we won't get into that. There's no, not much point. Uh, and then, of course, finally, you can get the year as well. So this is how you use dates. Uh, just remember, if you can, if you are not specified otherwise, you should use UTC. Always use UTC. I've seen programs that were made using now. I've seen them in C Sharp. I've seen them in Go programming language and well, were uh, problems and the problems were quite big it took me many hours to actually solve these problems and the issue simply turned out to be the wrong date one place was using one time zone the other place was using another time zone and everything got messed up now if you want to learn more about c sharp you can watch my c sharp course on the confession solution learning platform you can watch my blazer course if you're interested in that front end development and of course my API course on Confucian Solution Learning Platform. You also find some exercises there on 
some certain courses which you will actually be able to submit for my review.